All right, let's let's uh, let's start. Um, hey, all right, let's get started. Cause joy, joy, joy. What's up? And Taylor are mm-hmm. in the house, and we want to say a couple of words about world and conversation um, as we are at this transition point in the semester. Joy. Yeah. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Joy. Um, I'm seeing some familiar faces as you guys have started to complete your dialogues. So I'm just here to share part of the opportunity. I know every day on the pre-loop there is a slide saying you can visit our Word and Conversation backslash opportunity page. One of the two opportunities we're here to talk to you about is the internship opportunity we offer. It is a three credit course with a six hour commitment and we need some new interns Yo, now. wait, 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 hang on, hang on, is dog. It, is it too hang chatty? On. No, no, no. What's up, am Yo. I talking too fast? Nah, you're awesome as always because you're just always awesome. But I just want to make sure we have people paying attention. Mm. All right, mom. Thanks. Okay, to repeat myself, which I don't like doing, we need some more interns. It is a three credit course for a credit class called Soch 300. Six hour commitment. Our class time is Fridays 3.30 to 4.30, okay? You guys can gain skills or expand on sp- skills that you already have for fa- various things such as statistics, logistics, operation skills, communication skills, even media, if you will, if that's what you're into. If you have something you wanna expand upon, we definitely have the space for you guys to be able to do so under a Penn State credit and even earn a certificate for the other opportunity that Taylor is gonna give you guys some details on. But again, for the intern opportunity, these are the guys that you see in your intern in your dialogues who are doing your attendance right and come back for your survey. That's what you guys will be doing. Um, we need some more people to join our course, course ASAP if you could. Again, the available time you must have will be Fridays, 3.30 to 4.30. That'll be the course time that shows on your Lion Path if you are interested. So that's starting. this semester? This semester yo, starting man. ASAP. And can, they, can the intern position, yo, can the intern position turn in next year and then coming years after you do it into a paid position? Oh my goodness, yes, absolutely. So for an internship, everyone will start off with that three credit incentive. Afterwards, if you return for an additional semester at any time, you will earn a stipend for the semester. And if you return a third semester, you could be a wage employee under the Prince State <clears throat> employment and have a steady income every other week. Yeah. Dude, and awesome, other things. Man. I mean, I started off volunteering with Sam um, and now I'm the administrative coordinator and I'm on salary. So you guys probably don't want to stick could around here that long. But again, that's just something about the opportunity and where it could grow to expand and yeah. make it what you want. And they to. also might not be as cool as you. So probably so sorry about that. But we all have our own strengths. Um, Taylor, um, what is the information you could share about the second opportunity? Yeah, so you guys have all done a dialogue by this point, so congrats, first of all, you guys did it. Um, Secondly, if you enjoyed your dialogue or you had fun um, having that conversation, we do have our recruitment season opening up for our facilitation team. So that's going to be a four credit sociology class. Um, Again, I know Joy mentioned really briefly that certificate, that's going to be a certificate that that facilitation opportunity is kind of based around. So I would definitely recommend that. It looks really good on a resume if that's what you're looking for. And it's a really great kind of opportunity just to learn networking skills, um, I guess general social skills, critical thinking skills, stuff like that. Um, I know personally I just got into grad school and the um, biggest thing I talked about was my facilitation experience at Wink. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, Again, you can find the opportunity link um, right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. So definitely check that out if you're interested. It is a class. Um, do you know when the class is? Dude, the, the grad school piece or just the, the skills you learn as a facilitator, the, ki- the skills are learning how to communicate around questions and listening. And man, there's, in my humble opinion, 
I'm not a facilitator. In fact, I've had that position twice in my life and I've been fired both times. But for those who are really awesome at it, it's just such a great skill, man. So good for you that it was key. All right, man. So we got it. Yes, that is it from us. Thank you for the time. If you're interested in the more immediate opportunity, that is Sociology 300 level credit course for three credits. Meeting time, Fridays, 3.30 to 4.30. Visit the opportunity page or just hang out after class today and let Sam or Darnisha know and we'll write your name down so we can stay Dude, in contact. You rock. Um, Thanks, man. Real quick, I will also be here after class if you have questions about that. So you can All also right. come find me. Okay, bye. Thanks, Ma. Um, all right. Hey, so here's what we're going we're gonna to rock with. So you, you guys, yo, you know the drill, right? We cool? So now you can have, use your Wi-Fi. Make sure you connect. Let's do the attendance and let's start class. Yo, let's also make sure you don't send the code to anybody. Right, bro? Because, like, that would be so lame. Yeah, are you on? Uh, just take a, you can't get on? Take a selfie. Yo, hang on, man. Maybe I have the wrong code. Some, some people said uh, they have the code already before they have the code, so. Hang on. Yo, hang on a second, man. Yo, just hold tight. Yeah, I know. I got you, dog. It's not working, right? Okay, hang on. Hello? Hola. Tenemos un mierdero. Oye, el, el, el quiz no está trabajando. No está bien. No está funcionando. Yo tengo 8601. Yeah? Sí. Sí, sí, sí. It's not, it no, stop. Listen, man. You All right, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Can you? All right, hang on. We're starting. All right, y'all. Can we can we start? Can we? How, why don't you just introduce yourselves? Where who you are? Where you're from? And uh, my name is Wahab. Well, hang on. 
Uh, my name is Wahab. I'm uh, from Kuwait and I'm a data science major. So Wahab from Kuwait. Hi, my name is Mingxi and I'm from China, ed uh, education and public policy major. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm going to use your English name. Sarah. Sarah. Okay. Hi, I'm Nele Gupta. I'm from India. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. Awesome. Uh, hi, my name is Mohammed. I'm from Saudi Arabia and I'm a finance major. Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm from Indonesia and I'm a sophomore in biomedical engineering. So, Indonesia. Do you, used in, are, you used to watch this class in high school? I don't want to sound like a nerd, but yeah. Yeah? Back in Indonesia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is why I go to Penn State as well. Dude, really? Wait, you applied to Penn State because of this? Because you watched it? Not because of that. Part of it, yeah. Oh, damn, dog. All right. That feels like a lot of pressure. All right, well, here you are, man, right here in the front, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, so listen, um, here's where we're at, y'all. Uh, you can kind of turn a little bit. I'm going to run through some slides, and then we are going to have a conversation. And we are going to uh, open it up. These are, these are, we're going to, well, I want to talk about guns. I want to talk about violence here. And I, mass, mass violence in particular, but, um, and this is really, hey, let me, let me say a couple things at the outset. Um, You know, given what just happened at Michigan State the other day, the other night, um, this is actually a really disturbing class to be having. And, and I could say Michigan State, but every day it's somewhere else. And it, so what I'd like to do today is just really kind of come down to a certain level of respect for all that has happened. And we're gonna open it up also, I want you people to ask questions. And I just now remembered that there's somebody in the class who was in one of the high schools where, uh, where down in Florida, right, where the killings, where we had a school shooting. Who is that? I think it's Florida. Are you here? Anybody? All right. Um, I, uh, to all of those who are gun owners and gun rights people and that sort of, and, and of that realm, what I, what I want you to, to know is that we're just, we're having a sociological conversation with people from other countries who are going to offer a way of understanding some things, okay, from a different perspectives. And it's a really unique opportunity because, you know, here we are in the U.S., and, but when you're not from the U.S., you just see some things very, very differently about what has come to just be this normalized reality here in, in this country. And so for the gun people, what I want you to know is we're just having a sociological conversation. This is not an anti-gun class. Um, I personally grew up with guns. I started shooting guns when I was five years old. So it's not about that. It, this is about a sociological reality of what we're dealing with. So. Leah, can you just, I want to show you a few things. Um, this is the question that I, I saw this question and I just said, God, why, you know, just like how bizarre it is that, you know, like when, when I was young, when, when I was in grade school, so like kindergarten through probably sixth grade, I think it kind of ended in sixth grade. We used to have nuclear drills like nuclear war drills. We'd go down into the basement of my school and we'd sit up against the wall 
And then we'd, at some time, we'd be notified, and we'd put our heads between, like, uh, in our laps, like this. And I guess that's what you would do if the nuclear bombs went off, right? I never really asked, because as a kid, I thought it was very strange, and I thought, like, now as I look back on it, I think, how incredibly bizarre that was to think like somehow that's going to protect us from nuclear war and nuclear fallout. I mean, it's just kind of bizarre. But now we have these lockdown drills and I think, wow, wow, this is what we've come to as a civilized nation, right? So it's fascinating. If I don't judge it, it's absolutely fascinating. So, it, but it becomes normalized in the way that for me as a kid, having the nuclear drills, right, became normalized. But now as an adult, I think, how's oh, the craziest effing thing I could ever imagine. So let me show you a couple of things. All right, next slide. Um, so there's a billion firearms in global circulation as of five years ago. It's more now, but you know, probably not that much more. 85% um, civilian owned which is, you know, pretty, the, the, the lion's share of those, or at least the, the largest, the country with the largest ownership would be the United States. Next slide. I just want to show you these things, okay, so you all can be thinking about. The market, market share of the leading exporters of major weapons, 2017, 2021, and we're, we're at, a, at a, almost 40%. We've been at almost 40% for the past 35 years that I've been tracking this. And... You know, that says something, right? It says something about a nation, right? Like, like for example, it says something about a, a Christian, a so-called Christian nation, like WWJS. Like, what would Jesus say about that? You know, and what did, what did, isn't there the story that Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple or something? But, you know, today he would, like, shoot him first, I guess, Right? Next one, top 10 civilian gun owning countries. So, you know, of every 100 residents, we have 120 guns. It's a lot of guns, y'all, right? That's more than one per person if you're not a math major. Um, all right, next one, gun murders per 100,000 residents. We just kind of look at, you know, it's only 3.6 per 100,000 people, which isn't over the top, but it is, by far and away higher than other countries. You know, look at Japan, right? Next one. Americans 25 times more likely to be murdered with a gun than people of other developed countries, okay? So this is developed countries. So this isn't, you know, like Colombia and Brazil and, um, but, but if you think about all the other ways in which people can be murdered, you know, by knives or a hatchet, an axe, a pickaxe to the brain, like, um, wasn't that Trotsky that got that? Uh, but all the other methods besides guns are the same between the U.S. and other countries. So think about what that means for us about guns. Yo, hang on. Next one. Um, I saw this, and I thought it was kind of interesting. And what, what you see here is just, so on the left, gun rate per 100,000 people, and this is gun ownership. These are states. Each one of these dots is a state. So the number of deaths by firearm per 100,000 people, okay, versus gun ownership. So you see the more guns there are in a state, the higher is the death rate, which of course makes sense, right? But it also makes me wonder, like you have, this is a question, right, for you all. So, because what we're gonna do for you all is just like, I want you all to make sense of this from your own countries. So, next slide. Um, this is kind of interesting. This is just some data from Korea that I pulled together. And so Korea is one sixth the size of the United States, okay? Um, and so that means, you know, there are 10 gun deaths per year in 2019 in Korea. So if Korea were the size of the, and I had the same population as the United States, not the geographic size, but the population size of the United States. If Korea had the same population size as the US, that 10 would be 60, because you gotta multiply it by six, okay? 
So the U.S., in the U.S., 60 gun deaths in 2019. Bro, do you, do you have any sense of what that 60 represents for the U.S.? How many gun deaths that is or how often we have that many gun deaths? Like One, a lot. Like what's a lot? What, do you, what would you say? Use that. Give me, a, give me a number, bro. Daniel. Every what? Every. Um, I would say 60,000 deaths. No, 60 deaths every what? Like every month, every week. Every day. Every day. What would, what would you say, bro? I was going to say like 60 deaths in a year. Every minute. What's that? Every, every minute. Dude, go ahead. Yeah, we're not that bad. Fuck. That's a good guess, though. We, we might get to that point. Bro, next slide. Yeah, every 12 hours, right? It's like, damn, man. Like every 12 hours. Like that's... Okay, so... Um, yeah, we might get to that. No. Okay, you can just blacken that. Or you actually, go back to that one screen with the placard, with the, with the poster. The second, the second one. All right, so listen, can you all like, what's it like in your countries, man? Can we, Daniel, let's just start with you in Indonesia, like. Okay, so we kind of do have drills, but not for that stuff, but more for earthquakes. So in Indonesia, we sometimes have earth, earth, earthquakes, so that's why we have lockdowns, and which is reasonable, right? Because earthquakes happen, or maybe fire drills, but I feel like that's just, sort of sad to think about it. Well, what's it like in Indonesia? Like, walk us through. Like, okay. you guys have gun. Like, um, what, what's, what's the gun situation? So, guns, are, like, firearms are illegal in Indonesia, but I also have a rifle myself. I used to shoot rats a lot back in Indonesia. But it is illegal to own a gun, so it's very uncommon for people to get to, her, to hear about school shootings and stuff. So, that's what I've... Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Yo, yo, yo. Wait, dudes, right, right here. This is, class is this way, okay? Fuck, dude. Dude, this is why, these are these moments. Can I just tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say something personal here. No, 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 I don't, I don't need that. I'm gonna say something personal. Listen, man. I could come in here and read off PowerPoint slides, okay? Like, I could do that. And, like, it'd be easier for me. Like, I don't fuck. Why, why would I bother setting up a class where, you know, like, we're talking to people? You know what I mean? Why would I do that? It's a lot more work. I could just read off PowerPoint slides. I could pay the same amount of money. I don't care about you. Dude, you could be sleeping here. I'm going to still get paid. You all could come in here. You could take your notes. Do whatever you got to do. I just read from the slide, and, you, and I'm going to get paid. It's less work for me. Life is good. Why would I do that? I don't do that because it would be boring for me. The problem is, it's like you get a chance to listen to these people from other countries talk about guns in the U.S. Or talk about just guns all over, and guns in their countries. It's like, To me, enough said, bro. Okay, so listen, man. So how, how, let me just ask you this. How is it coming here? Get, when you're at home in Indonesia, where are you from? By, where do you live, by I'm the way? I'm from Jakarta. The Jakarta? Okay. So do you guys, how often are you thinking about guns and murders and... Gun murders? Well, in Indonesia, in Jakarta in particular, there isn't a lot of people who own guns. If you're about to, die, if you're gonna die in Jakarta, you'll probably get hit by a car, which is more likely than it is to be shot by a gun. So when I first came here, that's one of my worries because I am going to a college, and that's kind of scary considering I've heard about school shootings and stuff. So that's something that I'm aware about. Aware, aware about in America. So you hear about shootings in the U.S. from back home, clearly all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when, and, and, and let me just ask somebody else. When you came, when you were coming here to the U.S., were people afraid for you, bro? Yeah, I mean, so my dad basically told me, like, wherever you are, if you get into a conflict, don't engage. 
like we don't have like guns back home like again it's illegal for like civilians to have them so knowing that someone is out there with a gun and if you get like engaged in like a fight or something there's a good chance that they might pull a gun out and you know like you're gone so he said whatever happens even if it's like a small time mugging if you have something on you let it go like don't engage whatsoever yeah so that's the that's the message you get here mm. sarah how, how about you man what how is it how was it coming here like did, did people did they worry for you did they um yeah just like what he said uh, my parents was also like uh, if you get into conflict just let uh like other things go or just save your life like that mm -hmm. yeah but before i came to us i was like never really concerned about these things and never even think about like can get into a gun conflict or something like a gun fight like yeah. at the okay corral or something you don't know what that is like a, like it's like the whole, like a western whatever yeah i only heard from news about these things uh huh. Um, yeah, that's it. It's like it feels like really far away from me. Mhm. Mm so, so yeah, somebody else, Mohammed. How about how about you, man? How about you? What's your like coming um, here? What are some of the things you were thinking about? Um, I was pretty scared and paranoid. I still am. Scared and paranoid? Yeah, like just from the idea that someone could shoot you at any time. I feel like like wherever I've been, like the few countries I've lived in. I've always felt safe, and especially like Saudi Arabia, like where I'm from, it's never a thought, like I never think of just, you know, someone pulling out a gun, like I could walk in the street pr safely. If you get into arguments, get into fights, like nothing, like maybe it'll get physical, but no guns are usually involved. So like my parents are, were quite worried for me. And yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. So when you say you were scared, what were you scared of? Just the idea of, you know, you could get into an altercation and there's a very high, well, there's a higher chance in the U.S. of you, of this, any situation or argument ending in, you know, something fatal and like a fatal outcome. That, to me, is scary because I've always felt safe. Like, I've never felt scared. And like, just hearing what like happened in Michigan, for example, that's scary. And just uh -huh. the idea that you live in a place where safety is not necessarily, um, what's the word? You, you're not necessarily fully safe wherever you are, even in your own dorm, for example. Yeah. That, that scares me. So for you, for, for you and for, wait, is it Wahab? Wahab, right? Yeah. Okay. From Kuwait. I remember the first time. So I used to travel to the Gulf region a lot. Um, you know, um, to, to, to Kuwait, to Qatar, to the Emirates, to, you know, all over. Um, and I remember Americans would always say, if I say, oh, yeah, I'm going to the Middle East, they'd be like, oh, Iraq, right? Going to Iraq. Like, um, be careful. Are you, you, are you, are you going to be safe over there? Right? <laughs> I'm like, be safe over here. I'm living in the U.S., right? Do you have, do, do you have like, a, what would yeah, you, like, like? It's pretty much the, the opposite uh, for us. Like, uh, for example, like hold, it, came, hold it close. Like, when I came to the United States, like, uh, the shootings and stuff, it's not something I, I ever, like, really actively think about, but it is, like, my parents would worry because they do hear the news, and at this point, it's, like, like a stigma or, like, a stereotype about the U.S. Mm -hmm. where, like, shootings are common, like, everyone has guns, so... Like internationally, it's like I, I, I know a lot of people that like their parents or like their family members or whatever would worry when they do go to the U.S. and it's like, oh, stay safe, like don't get involved in like a, an armed conflict or something. Hey, let me wait. Are you, let me ask you this question. Um, what when you say people like you're not afraid? What, what do you think? What, what, is, what is it that leads you to not be afraid? I'm n not, it's not like, not, like if someone does have a gun, of course, like, I think like most people would be afraid, but uh, it's just because like back home, I'm just so, like, it's like used to like never really thinking about guns like, or gun violence. So once you're here, like, it's not something I actively like, just think about. It's not like 
something I worry about. Like I, I'm never like, oh, there must be like a gun, like in the, like a, a, someone with a gun in a store who's like gonna. Shoot, shoot so, a okay, so one of the things um, that I find interesting, and I'm wondering if you all like how much you have this now, having been here, because. Usually, after you're at a place a certain amount of time, like, for example, I'm not really, I mean, when you've acclimated yourself to a place and you start to feel comfortable, then you're not, you're not really thinking about those things, right? Like, I, I remember, like, when, I, when I'm in conflict zones and I've been in um, a couple different war zones, right? After a while, like, you're just, yeah, there's a war going on, but you're just, like, it's just here you are. Like, you're just living. Like, the conflict isn't happening. You, you, you might even hear bombs going off over there, but they're not going off here. So it's like, okay, I'm safe. I'm fine. You, you know? And so I'm wondering if some of that goes on for you all. You get here. But if your parents or somebody else has never been here, they don't know. There's really not a, a shooting uh, in, in every city on a, in every day kind of thing, right? Although there are a lot. Does anybody want to weigh in on that a little bit? Do you have yeah, I feel like you do hear it in the news a lot, but yeah. If it like I, it's, I feel like uh, for the most part, if it's not something like that happens to you or someone you know, it's and like if it, and especially if it's not in like uh, a close vicinity, it's hard to actively just like think about it, like if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Can you can can we go back to just the other day? Um, so this idea of run. Hey, can you can you just go back one slide? Um, run, hide, fight. Can you? Can one of you explain what that means? Uh, is it what you should do if uh, there's a shooter in like a school or something? Yeah. Like you should first like run, hide, but, like uh, stop, drop, and roll. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Can you explain what does that mean to you all? Like, have you learned that? Where you, where do you learn it? Where do you? I've only like I feel like that's only like common here, we, because uh, stuff like school shootings that's not really common outside of the U.S. Uh huh. So, Nile, what would you... I mean, for, for me, uh, specifically, like, from being from India, I, growing up, never heard anything about, like, a school shooting or someone, like, entering, uh, like, a premises and, like, killing people. That's, that was the only, like, things that, like that were only regarding, like, war between, like, the bordering nations. And just the idea of ha someone having a gun my mind only goes to like two things either it's like the national like army or something or like some kind of terrorist form like have like, civilians having like guns was n something that we never thought about like that was never like it there are still people who have like illegal firearms in india yes but the thought of like people entering schools for that never crossed our minds like we were never like even told about something like that like it's not it's like it's not even you don't even wouldn't even think about protecting a school because it just would never happen with guns right yeah like, like in china you have there. this thing with people a lot of knife violence i mean there's knife violence it's also i mean relatively speaking i mean i say a lot but it's all relative to one point. are you do you are you aware of that like would you say anything about that like people um do you know about that not really. It's not. It's not yeah. that wide. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Hey, I, so I have a question. Do you? What questions do you all have to Americans about this gun stuff? Like, what questions would would? What do you? What do you want to know of Americans? When you think about this, Muhammad. Don't you have a question like for the? Like about 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 our love affair with guns and stuff. Do you, I mean? Do you guys have any questions? I'm not so sure, honestly. What, what, is there anything, Daniel, is there anything you really want to know? Um, so back in Indonesia, I heard a lot of stories about gun shootings in America. I was just, I was wondering like if that's just exaggerated to paint like a certain portrayal of America or is that actually like a serious constant thing that's happening here? And that people are thinking about. Yes. Uh huh. That's like one of the things that I wonder when I'm back in Indonesia because it was like, wait, it's happening so often to a point that is it just you know people making it bigger than it's supposed to be or is it an actual issue that well okay so let me respond to that and i want to see if somebody else would wants to respond like how you think about it but one of the things that's that is important to keep in mind is is it's all it's re relative so we talk about per hundred thousand people right so you can't 
or you got to have some number that's your base number across different populations. So you can't, you know, obviously we're a country of 130 million people. It's, we're a lot larger than, you know, Korea and, you know, and, and you know, many other countries, right? Colombia, um, Brazil, actually. But, but gun violence, so relatively speaking, there's, you could argue there's really not that much gun violence in the U.S., like we can we can make that argument. That's like pretty simple argument to make because it's like, come on, man. How many how many places are there? How many schools are there? How many people are there? How many times are people out just like shooting other people up with guns relative to the size of, of the population? Right. But compared to other countries is when it starts to break down a little bit like, whoa, hang on a second, man. But compared with so many other places there's so much that's really such a question right does any american want to could anyone wait could anyone weigh in on this like how how do you all how do you all think about this it as as an as an american um i feel like there's like two different types of gun violence almost like the ones that you guys probably hear about are like a lot of school shootings, huge like mass things. Um, but like as a person who comes from Philadelphia, you like have to hear about these things daily that like maybe they don't play it on the news like very far away. But like coming from where I come from, you kind of get scared like even there's altercations like road rage. There's people who've been shot like over road rage, things like that. Um, so I really say, like, I guess it depends on the type and, like, where you're from and those types of aspects. So some of it depends on, there are a lot of things, like, where you're from, where you're living, and, uh-huh. Bro. I want to speak on this because I'm from Lancaster, so big hunters around my place. And I have a pretty crazy story. So my high school teacher went to the same high school I went to, and he would always say that, when he was in high school, he would bring his shotgun to class and put it in his locker so that the dude could go hunting after <laughs> after school. So guns are pretty pre prevalent here. Uh-huh. That's kind of wild. Like that went that wouldn't happen anymore. Do, who who's got who's who's got a question for for the the folks up front? Like who wants who's got a question you would ask about to folks? Bro. Just from like an outside perspective, like what do you guys think the reason in America is for like the gun violence you, you hear about? Yeah, yeah, How, what, what's that? How do you think about that? That's a good question. Yeah, what's the story that, what's the story that you all tell about the reason for the gun violence here? I don't wanna generalize, but like I feel like there are certain people here that, you know, lack morals because America's like, you know, there are a lot of people from different countries and, you know, different, I wouldn't necessarily say religions, but I, from my perspective, I feel like there are a lot of people that don't have a lot of morals. And I don't like, I don't want to generalize obviously, but in like, I've lived in like China and in Chinese culture, like gen, everybody's so peaceful and, <laughs> I've like, there's rarely any violence when I was, like when I lived there, and example for Saudi, we're like pretty religious, we're almost like, we follow Muslim rules, Islamic rules, and because of that, there's rarely any violence that's going on. In, in civilian life. In civilian life, obviously, yeah. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, again, I don't wanna generalize, but I feel like the people that do commit these crimes just lack a lot of morals. So, yo, so hang on. This is actually, one second. This is actually a really interesting question. So where he arrives at is it's a morality issue. It's like, it's, it's about the way Americans are conceptualizing right and wrong. So a country in which morality itself, so this is just where he comes to, right? So this isn't right or wrong. This is what's really fascinating. The only way, the way he makes sense of this it's like there's just a conceptualization of right and wrong in the moral codes that are really just kind of distorted or discombobulated or something where it's just like somehow this is just more okay with a greater number of people. 
And bro, you're shaking your head. Do you agree with that? I think in a sense, take, if you are able to take someone else's life, there has to be something morally wrong. At the end of the day, remove the skin, remove the borders, remove the color, remove the religion. We are human beings. If you are able to take somebody else's mm -hmm, life mm -hmm. ma with gun or gu without guns, there has to be something morally wrong with you. Okay, with, with you, but now I want to go to another question though. I want to go to a society, an advanced society like the United States. So I want to hear what you think and one, one of you two can respond, either Sarah or you. So now I want you to weigh in on this, but what we are in the United States is one of the most advanced and prosperous societies that the, that the world, the human beings have ever created. Powerful, advanced, prosperous, right? And yet, this is the state of affairs. So I want you, can you weigh in on that? That the moral codes around which our society is, or this society is organized, somehow accepts that. Can you go, go back one slide, Leah? That run, hide, fight is what we, sh is the best way, the best thing that we could do to teach starting at five-year-olds. Like we as a society have decided that starting at five-year-olds, we're gonna teach them to run, hide, fight. And this is the moral order around which we are going to build this world that we have, this country that we have, right? It's a society, like, oh, it's a great country, and here it is. And we're so great that what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach our five-year-olds to run, hide, fight as a way to deal with this thing out there, this violence that's like, it's like, a, it's like COVID or something, you know? It's just this hidden thing that's just scourge is gonna come at us at any moment. Do you have a thought on that? So. Um, I feel like this is also related to how United States was um, started. It's like um, at first there's a lot of people living in the rural area. So it's like kind of necessary for them to have guns to protect themselves since they're like uh, police uh -huh. cannot just go to different households and just uh, protect them. And also uh, I feel like uh, since U.S. is more like an individualized uh, society, uh -huh, like uh -huh. everybody needs to take care of themselves. Okay. So that's why it's like uh, all you can do is run, hide, or, hide fight. or fight. So listen, so you understand, uh, so Americans in particular, this, what, what's being said here isn't right or wrong. Okay, what's being said here is a foreigner, as someone who's outside the U.S., this is her as a, as, a, as a young woman from China who's also lived in the U.S., is someone who's trying to make sense of who we are as a nation. And so it's like, oh, okay, it must just be this, right? You, you see that, right? So it's like, okay, we're going to try to make sense of this. Do you... Do you have anything you would add to the, like, this, like, anybody want to add to this? And then we're going to come over here, right? Uh, with your like, uh, generally, uh, it's, like, kind of impossible to Hold separate, to separate like, guns from, like, American culture. Like, at this point, it's, like, really ingrained, and so, you'll ne like, it'll never really be separated. So, at this point, yeah, like, uh, there, like, there is no, like, uh, I, I, I don't think there is a way to, like, uh, lower the, like, gun violence because, they like, guns are already like out there like in households and in the streets so there is no way to take just take it back so so but in kuwait right so answer, tell tell me this in kuwait would you say that Ku there's it's just impossible for kuwaitis to separate the united states from guns and gun violence uh, like the two are just like this when you think of yeah. the u.s you think of guns yeah, especially because like every time you open the news, you'll hear about a new like uh, mass shooting somewhere. So, yeah. Because like they go oh, the really like they go really viral, so it's natural that other countries would generally think, oh, you, like they'd connect the United the United States with like gun violence. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so fa You agree with that? So my question to you guys mainly. Wait, hold the hold the mic really close. 
Can you? Thanks. Yeah, yeah we're good. Yeah. So my question is, like, there's a common view in the U.S. that it's like, oh, well, yeah, there's these gun violence deaths, but, you know, that's the cost of being able to personally protect yourself. And sometimes it has validity, like what you were saying, Sarah, about, like, self-defense if the police can't arrive and whatnot. But some people will take it really far and be like, oh, civilians need to be able to protect themselves from their government if no civilians are armed and all that. Like, does that sound ridiculous to you guys, or do you guys feel that you Here, can't protect yourself? Yeah, yeah, here's a, yeah, yeah, okay, that's a really good question. So how does that resonate with you all needing to protect yourself, A, from your government, the, the tyranny of your government, and B, or the possible tyranny of your government, okay, or B, protect yourself from other people who might do you harm? Like, how do, how do you think about that? Like, I understand where that, like, where that sentiment comes from because other than, like, most other countries, the United States isn't, like, as unified. Like, there is, like, a lot of, uh, like, disagreements within. So, uh, like, especially because it is ingrained in the Constitution, so I do understand why they would, like, prefer to keep their guns. But at the same time, like, I feel like especially now, more often than not, it does go into, like, the wrong hands. And, like, it does, like, lead up to these, like, mass sh shootings. Well, right hang on, though. Uh, let me be clear on that. M no, more often than not, the vast majority of people who own guns never, A, accidentally kill someone with their guns. They don't accidentally shoot themselves. They don't, the gun doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Their guns are, you got, a, you got 400 million guns in the United States, and it's really relatively rare that a child gets hold of the gun and kills themselves right, him or herself, takes the gun to school. I mean, it's really relatively rare that these things happen, okay? So when you just said right there, more often than not, it's like, no, 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 actually, let's keep in mind that it's actually really still rare. It's just that what we're talking about is that it's so much more common than in other places. And number two, it's so the other world has a perception of us of the U.S. that can be very, that's very different in many ways from the perceptions that we have of ourselves in this country, right? So what was the question that I asked you to respond to? Wait, it was your question. Yeah, the question was, um, do you feel unsafe yeah, um, the, without guns, like specifically from the government or other individuals if they were to attack you? Yeah, like, bro, you're from, from Saudi, man. Like, you, you know, you have, a, you, you have a very authoritarian government, right? Really, but, and by authoritarian, what I mean is in the, in the most general sense, right? It's like authoritarian means that power is being held. So I, I didn't say like fascist and totalitarian. Authoritarian in the most general sense, it's like you weigh here. Authoritarian means that in an excessive or an ex, it's when a great deal, a greater amount of power, a great deal of power is in the hands of a small group of people in society, which is usually represented by the government. In a, in a, in there's, there's no purely authoritarian government anywhere in the world. You can just kind of lean more in this direction or you lean more in the direction of more democratic there's no such thing as a pure democracy. You just have a more democratic government, which means that a greater, relative to what could be, a greater amount of power is in the hands of a greater number of citizens. So you see, right? So you don't, democracy doesn't exist. And, and, and authoritarianism doesn't exist. You can just be a little bit more democratic or a little bit more authoritarian. Well. Saudi Arabia is definitely a little bit more authoritarian. So, like, how is how's that for you? Do you feel like you, yeah, I got to protect ourselves? I think when the power is with the right people and our government, then you wouldn't really face any issues. Mm -hmm. um, I've, unless you really do any trouble, and I, by trouble, I mean, like, big, big trouble in Saudi, yeah. You really won't face any issues as a citizen or as an outsider, like as a foreigner that's coming to live in Saudi or visit. Yeah, it's you just have to follow the rules. There are rules that are placed, whether you like them or not. Yeah, you follow them, and if you follow them, you'll live a safe life. Okay, so yeah. so for example, like I can get a can of spray paint, and I can go out and spray paint on my house, you know, down with th the U.S. government sucks, right? 
And if you spray paint that on your house, you're going to get a knock on the door. going to be like, dude, what up, man? Yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Obviously, uh, with the government, usually you prefer not to speak. But uh, at least in my perspective, I, I love my government. And okay. they've done me No, well. but the idea is, but, but, yeah, it, but what I'm can. hearing you say is, but just don't spray paint that on your house. Yeah. Like, whatever, what's the point? And, like, what does it do for me? Like, I have the ability to go on the wall of my house and spray paint the U.S. government sucks or Joe Biden sucks. And, like, I have the freedom to do that. Like, all right, so whatever. I have the freedom right now to go in the back room and take a sip of a beer. But, like, I don't need to do that. Like, I don't have one back there. But if I did, like, what's the point? Like, I don't need to do that. I'll just wait till after class and go have a beer. But, okay, but the question is, so you're saying, like, no, nah, I don't feel like I need to really protect myself. Neela, do you, do you, can you or Daniel respond to that? That's a, this is a really good question, by the way. I think, like, specifically in India, if you have something that, you know, like, like you said, like, you complain about the government or something, more or less it's not the government that knocks the door. It's, like, it's the people who feel offended, like, they'll start saying that you're like not patriotic or like anti-India or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even in that case, unless and until you don't know, it gets like so exaggerated to a level that you feel unsafe. You Got don't, you. We don't need that kind of like perspective that we need guns to protect ourselves. Got you. Right. I got you. Right. So guns aren't really going to, once you get to that point, guns aren't going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. And there have been a lot of crazy things that happen in India, man. Do you have anything to add, Daniel, to this? Or? And, then, and then wait, I want to ask, and then I want to get someone else to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, bro. So I think this is not about whether or not we feel safe with the government or not. I think it's just common sense. If you take guns out, everyone will be safe. There might be some little issue with it. I've seen it in Indonesia. There might be riots, people throw bottles or rocks at each other, but I'm pretty sure that is a better trade-off than giving people guns and having people shoot at each other. Yeah. And it's just common sense. Everyone's safer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's just so, my view. Okay, listen. Somebody, somebody else, bro. You're on, man. Um, so my question's kind of on the morality issue. Hey, can, um, hang on a sec. Can you yellow? Can you get him, by the way? Can you put yellow on the screen? All right, go ahead, bro. Morality question. Yeah, so you guys keep talking about other people shooting other people, but for the 2019 stat he put up, three in five of those gun deaths were suicide. Does that change your view on the morality issue? And half of all gun deaths in the United States? Three-fifths. Three-fifths of the 2019 yeah. gun deaths were all yeah. suicides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, half, we'd say on average it's like half are suicide, right, you say, in the United States, right? I think, like, personally speaking, I've been in the U.S. for, like, almost more than four years now. I do not have, like, an issue with people carrying guns, but the issue with me is that people who are ready to use it to take lives, be it their own or somebody else's, that is, like, an alarm for me. And that, like, again... Taking someone else's or your own life, again, taking like a soul, that is Im Im immoral. Yeah, but, but most people don't. Right? I mean, very few people do, right? So, you know, think about this. Very few people actually use a gun on another person. So this is what we're struggling with. Like, how do we make sense of this world? How do you all make sense of this place called the United States where we have this relatively speaking, an excessive amount of violence, relatively speaking, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm also from India and I've been here for like two years now. Um, and I sort of disagree with the morality argument in general because I think it's, it's not about, okay, Americans don't have strong moral grounds, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I personally don't know any American who's like, yeah, sure, like I wouldn't feel bad going and doing a mass shooting, you know what I mean? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, I know, or, or like we should. It's okay. Just go out and shoot people. That's exactly. all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think everyone. Ha sure, morals are subjective and all of that stuff. But I don't think being in a different country defines your morals in a way that you're comfortable using a gun and killing someone. It's more of I think the accessibility for guns. So, if if an American is in a certain state of mind and has an access to the gun, he would use it. But at the same time, someone from some other country who's also in the same state of mind, but if they have access to the gun. So I think it's more about the access rather than the morality point of view. Because I don't think someone thinks that, hey, 
going into a school and shooting people is something that's mm -hmm. okay on a moral basis. Yeah, no, listen, nobody thinks that, yeah. right? No, n nobody thinks that, th you want the mic? Yeah, yeah, no, nobody thinks that. The, the guy in Michigan the other night, he's mentally ill, right? First off, anyone who does that is mentally ill, right? Like, I think that we can say that the, if, if I wanna define mental illness, one very clear definition of mental illness would be to take a gun and go out and randomly kill people. Like that, that could be the very first line in my and Sam's definition of mental illness. So everybody who does that is mentally ill, right? So, all right, bro. Yeah, I mean, you, you do. You, you have a question or is this a comment? Um, and it can be either. That's fine. Like, I mean, one of the statistics that like we don't really see, and like, I don't know if I've ever possibly saw, but I've always like thought about, like is, like, you know, we see like, yeah, there's a lot of gun deaths, but like, it's really like, in my opinion, it's about murder, because if you're gonna go kill somebody, like, you're gonna go, you're gonna kill somebody. Like, and just because we have more guns in the United States means that there's gonna be more gun deaths. But like, it's like murder is just murder. Well, yeah, yes and no though, right? So here's the thing. Um, so go back to the one slide that I put up, right? All other murder statistics in the US are equal to the murder statistics of other industrialized nations. So people that use a knife, people that use a baseball bat, people that use whatever, strangle people, whatever, the data are the same. It's what stands out for, um, for this country are gun deaths. And the reason is because A, guns are prevalent, and B, it's just really easy, much easier to shoot somebody than, than, than not. I mean, you just can do that very quickly. And now we have guns that, you know, have like high capacity. And so you can just kill a lot of people very quickly. So that's, that's a difference here in, in that. But yeah, dude, anyway, good. You have a question? Here, hang on, bro. Yeah. So I think it was kind of touched on, but did you think it's more of a morality issue? Like he mentioned, if you're going to kill someone, you're going to kill someone or hold it close. Like the ability, how the ease at which someone can get a gun as someone from Texas, like we had Uvalde in the summer and then two days after we hosted the NRA convention in Houston, where I'm from, and then both those guns were bought legally. And so our governor r runs on like the slogan, this is the easiest state to obtain a gun. Mm -hmm. All it, those guns were obtained legally in both the shooting back in 2018 in Galveston as well as the one at Uvalde. Well, okay, so l let me ask you as someone from Texas, right? So here you have people from other nations that just really see this totally different. Like, what do you need guns for? What's the point? Like, you could also have a society whereby um, the U.S. could be a place whereby you don't, you're not teaching five-year-olds to run, hide, fight, whatever, you're not doing that. Like, we don't, we don't do that in our schools. Like, none of those people up there do that and learn any of that in their schools. So, but we say, no, 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 but we want that and it's worth it somehow. So, like, what, what do you think people would say to them to convince them, no, but this is the best way to live. Like, this is us. This is who we are as Americans. Like, what would you say? What would people in Texas say, by the way? I mean, obviously, there are as many opinions as there are Texans, but... I mean, personally, the way I was raised, a lot of my family did have guns, not my parents directly, but like my grandparents did. So like, I've kind of accepted that a lot of people get it. My brother owns two. And sometimes for personal protection, especially living in inner city neighborhoods where it's maybe not as safe, but coming from the suburbs, people do kind of stockpile them. It's something at 18, like a lot of my friends went to go buy a gun because at this point they couldn't drink alcohol you know, buy cigarettes, like nicotine. Dude, so buying nothing. a gun was a rite of passage for them at Got 18, because they could. So it just is. So we're just, and I think alcohol and guns, the perfect mix, right? So the idea is that you, it just is a thing that's built into a culture. So do you, then they, do they even question it? Do, do people even sit around and be like, wait, is this like really makes sense? I mean, honestly, not really. I mean, open carry is legal. So like I will often like when I'm home this summer, I go to the mall and even at the office, some people literally had firearms on them or in their car at the time because that was just like the norm for where I come from. Uh-huh. Okay. Does anybody, anybody else? Hey, thanks. Yeah. 
Bro, hey, if you, if anyone up here, if one of you want to add something, j jump in, by the way. Bro. So you, you said mentally ill. I, don't you think the word terrorist is the more appropriate term? Terrorist? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I could argue that many terrorists probably are mentally ill. But, I mean, but, if you allow yourself to be brainwashed into an ideology, that, set, that certain ideologies, yeah, I would say, like ISIS, for example, I would be like, yeah, no, those motherfuckers, I would say that's mental illness too. But right? don't you think the word mentally ill, like belittles whatever he did, he did, like what they did is like terrorism. It's not, it's not something that mentally ill people do. Yeah, maybe. I think I could, I could, pro I could probably make that argument too. Yeah, I could probably make that argument. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is kind of a question for you or for anyone who like might know the answer because I've kind of always wondered it, but I'm not sure what it is. So um, you like spoke at the beginning of class how like when you were a kid you had like nuclear bomb threat drills and stuff, not run hide fight. That wasn't a thing. And I think back to my parents growing up and my grandparents growing up, that wasn't a thing for them, um, like pre Columbine. So if laws haven't gotten more lax on guns, and if anything, they seem to have been getting stricter, what is the like, common factor over time that has made mass shootings go up? Because if it's not gun laws, then like, what else? Yeah, is so A, like, in some curious. places, laws have become more strict. But in most places, it's become easier to obtain guns. There are many more guns. There are many more people. Like, you, the Houston High School where it's a rite of passage, it wasn't always a rite of passage, so it becomes even more and more. So more people think they need a gun. When Obama is elected, because you know Obama is black guy, so you gotta watch, we gotta watch black people, and because you know black people, so like the, gun, the, the rate of gun purchase just went through the roof. And because he's, a, you know, Obama was a communist, so he was gonna take everybody's guns, and so that makes it go even higher. And then one thing after another, it just everything is like, I, oh, I need a gun. He has a gun, so I need a gun. Oh, but he's got a bigger gun than my gun, so now I gotta get two guns. And like, oh shit, he just got another one. I gotta get a third one. It's, it's just that kind of stuff. So I think that, that there's a lot that just happens in that way. And, and for me, and, and I wanna know if anybody, and so that's a really good question. So for me, my, my question here, the, the thing that I'm trying to get us just to think about, and I wanna get anybody to respond at this level, is that sometimes what is, what is seen as normal in a, in a given society is like, water to fish the water doesn't the the fish the fish doesn't understand water because the fish is in water all the time 100 percent of the time so the fish doesn't know what water is doesn't think about water it's just not part of its reality that's how culture is for a society like you don't think about you don't think about culture you just it's part of it so like this whole gun stuff it just becomes like yeah, run, fight, hide, or whatever. It's like, yeah, I just learned that. It's like, but, but it's like, if you stop to think about the fact that some of these things, it's like, damn. And so we have these representatives in the room from other countries where this is not normal, bro. Another question I have is like, um, there's also like a massive gender divide when it comes to domestic terrorism. Uh huh. And like how it's almost entirely men. Yeah, it's at nine out, nine out of ten. It's, a, not, it's actually only it's about 90%, which is surprisingly, I would think it'd be higher than 90%, but still, I just read that. Yeah. Where, it, where does it come from? Just yeah, where does that, that come from? Still that just number. It's crazy. Maybe it just comes... I, where do you think it comes from, bro? Uh, men's mental health is horrible in this country. Ma yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, there are people that study this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe like... I don't know, man. Bro, do you have a res do you, did you have a response to that? I kind of had a like building on that. Okay, building on that question, yeah. So, like, like you said, men's mental health obviously isn't very good in this country. So, like, I guess sort of a question for you guys, like, if we're kind of, right now it seems like the U.S. is sort of in, like, a mental health epidemic sort of thing. So, like, if this were to happen maybe in, in China or in 
Saudi Arabia or places like that, like what do you think the the outcome would be if you didn't have access to guns? Because obviously guns are the worst possible way of remediating that problem. Yeah, so the, let me reframe the question. This is a really good question. So for the five of you, can a couple of you take this? Like I mentioned, Sarah, I mentioned knife killings. Like it's very, it's like this thing that's been happening more and more in China. It's like people, and it's all, it's all men, go into schools or other public settings with a big knife, like a butcher knife, and they'll, they'll, they kill a lot of kids. There have been school killings where like 10, 15, 20 little kids have been killed by all, almost all men with knives. But the question is, for you all, when this kind of thing happens in your country, what do you chalk it up to? What do you, what's the cause of it? I feel like uh, because uh, guns are very uncommon uh, in Kuwait. Uh, yeah, but I'm, not, I'm talking about like some kind of mass something where people, and we're, we're talking about men here, like go out and commit some like heinous act. What do you, what do you chalk that up like, to? Uh, if someone just commits like a random heinous act, like they, they usually just like, generalize it to oh they're insane because mental health isn't uh, very like uh, prevalent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, especially I, I say especially in the Middle East so they just uh, chalk it up to oh that person is like insane that person like, th like there isn't like okay. oh, like a specific answer it's just uh -huh. they're insane and if they don't like they'd either like like depending on the crime they'd either like execute them or just yeah, okay. put them like in a like an asylum. Yeah, so it would be. But in here, the irony, and then somebody else, Daniel, do you have a? I feel like there's gonna be always insane people out there in the world, and there's yeah. nothing we can do to change it. But the problem with giving them, with guns, is that if guns are just going around, and these some crazy people somehow happens to get that gun, then all hell break loose, and it's just gonna be a mess. So I figured that that could've, like we cannot remove craziness off the earth. It's gonna be there. Regardless. Okay, so here, so here's a thought. So um, Americans, tell me if I'm off base on, on this. I feel like increasingly when something happens, someone takes a gun and kills a lot of people or a knife or whatever it is, we don't, we don't start with the fact that they're insane. We don't start with a mental illness. We start with that, oh, I can't believe that person went into a school and did X, Y, or Z. I start with mental illness because in my mind, anyone who does that is, again, at the top of my list of people who are mentally ill. But we as a society don't start there. We start, oh, it's a disgruntled worker or it's an unhappy person or it's this or that. But we don't start with mental illness. And I think, wow, that's so, am I right on that? Are there any Americans that could, could you weigh in on that? Is that like, am I like, am, am So I'm from look South forward. Yeah, oh, look okay. forward. So I'm from South Florida and um, the Parkland shooting happened near where I was. And the first thing that people talked about was like bullying. That was the first thing they went to was you should be nice to the quiet kid. But that's not necessarily true. It's not all quiet kids who are shooters. It's just that mentally ill people are the ones who are driven to do that. It's not just bullying I feel so, like. so, the, so the idea wasn't it was that he was bullied and this was retaliation yeah that not he was mental always illness. alone and that it was everybody else's fault and not really his fault uh-huh so that is just something that I don't agree so with. so this is a really interesting thing as a sociologist right you want to you want to understand causality so you look at all the invisible strings that are connected that are caught leading people to to act in the ways they act and so like so here we have Oh yeah, we have all this bullying stuff or whatever. It's like, oh my God, we're taking responsibility off the individual and put it in on society, but we never look at, we're not looking at all, uh, other issues like the 400 million guns, for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, Sarah, last comment and then L Leah. Yeah. I feel like it's, all, I think it's almost also the same in China. It's like, um, when we hear like people goes to a school and kill people and we're like, oh, it's because too much pressure from the school side. Right, and right. It just that person dislikes the school and hates the system or something. They're unhappy. And so, yeah. Hey, by the way, Doe, so you have all the attendance sheets? We're good? Hey, so make sure we're going to try to do attendance right now, but if it doesn't work, your attendance is going to be based on you having signed that attendance sheet today. 
All right, but let's see if it works. Did it work? Or you, make sure you're on. Make sure you're on Wi-Fi right now, because that's how it's gonna work. Now. Dude, did you do it? Did we? This guy. What's with this guy, man? Do you know this guy? He's just sitting here, going, looking handsome, man. Going like, dude. Yo. Hey, by the way, uh, if you're those of you who are. Uh, in Thon this weekend. Uh, good luck, man. Good luck. Yeah. Volunteers. Yo, 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 yo. Dude, did it work? Good? <laughs>